Hi folks, I'm Miss Erin from C.C. Meller Memorial Library and as part of the ACLA Summer Reading Program this year, I am here to talk about three middle grade books for our middle grade moment. So if you're looking for more great programs from Allegheny County librarians or local museums or our other partners, you can go to aclasummerreading.org to find more information about other things that are going on in Allegheny County this summer. But I'm here to talk to you about books. So today we're going to talk about three middle grade historical fiction novels. So these are all books that take place in the past. And then I thought we could offer an activity, making your own time capsule, thinking about where we are right now and how it will look to us in the future. All three of the books that I'm going to talk to you about today are available for checkout on Hoopla, which is an ebook and audiobook and comic book platform that you can use your library card to check out items and read. So if your library isn't open yet, or if you just don't have a way to get to the library right now, you can still check out and read these books with Hoopla. The first book that I want to tell you about is called Inside Out and Back Again by Tan Ha Lai. And this is the story of Kim Ha, and it is 1975, so not too long ago, but definitely in the past. And Ha lives in the city of Saigon, Vietnam with her family. Her dad um, disappeared a few years ago and so right now it's just her mom and her brothers and Ha and they have heard that the war in Vietnam is coming closer and closer and closer to where they live in Saigon and they've been trying to decide if they should leave Saigon or if their dad is still alive, if he would be able to find them if they left, what should they do? So eventually things get bad enough that they decide to leave Saigon. And so this is the story of Ha and her family as they make their way out of Vietnam and end up in the United States. And her first year in the United States when she doesn't speak any English and she's trying to figure out how to navigate school and how to make new friends and how to interact with teachers and how to do even the easy stuff like going to the grocery store. How does all of that work in a totally new country when you don't speak the language? This book is really neat also because it's told entirely in poems. So there's a lot of white space on the page and you do get the story of what's going on, but you also get a lot of Ha's emotions, the way that she's feeling, the way that things affect her and her family as they're going through this really hard time in their lives. I think this is a beautiful book. It um, reads super fast because it's poetry, um, but you still get a lot of information about a very particular moment in history and a time when things were happening really quickly all of the time. So again, this is called Inside Out and Back Again, and it's by Tan Ha Lai. And the author actually lived through a lot of the same experiences that she talks about in this book. She decided not to write her own story. She decided to write a fictional version of it. So she named the character something different than herself. And she doesn't give Ha as many siblings as she had. But she tells a lot of the things that she experienced when her family left Saigon and moved to the United States. And so a lot of that is coming from her truth. So again, this book is really good. The next book that I wanted to tell you about is called One Crazy Summer. So that last one was set in 1975. This one is set in 1968, so a little bit farther back. And when this book starts out, you are on an airplane with these three sisters. There's Delphine, who's the oldest. There's v Vanetta, who's in the middle. And then there's Fern, who's the youngest. And these three sisters are flying from New York City to Oakland, California, which is outside San Francisco. And they're gonna live with their mom for a month. Now they haven't lived with their mom in over five years. And when their mom left them, she wasn't very friendly. She didn't leave a lot of explanations. And when they find her again in Oakland, they find out 
she's still not very friendly. She's still a little bit weird about having her daughters come and live with her for the summer. She keeps sending them off to do things on their own, saying things like, mm, you can go down and get breakfast with the Black Panther Center. So they go all over the city of Oakland on their own, and one of the places they go is to meet the Black Panthers. And when they've met, when they've heard about the Black Panthers on the news, it's always been really scary. They've heard about the black berets they wear and the guns that they carry and the way that a lot of them have changed their names. And when they go to the Black Panther Center, they find that they're serving breakfast to children and offering classes and lessons. And so the girls have to decide how much of that life they want to live while they're living in Oakland and how to match the things that they've heard on the news with the things that they're seeing in person. So again, this is called One Crazy Summer and it's by Rita Williams Garcia. The third book that I want to tell you about is called The Book of Boy, and it's by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. And this is the story of Boy. He doesn't have a name, he's just called Boy. And he was found by a priest, um, I should say. That last book was 1968, was when it was set. This book is set much farther back. This book is set in 1350 in France. And so Boy is found by a priest and he has a hump on his back. He's got a growth on his back and all of the people in the town where he lives make fun of him. They are worried that he's evil. They call him a monster. They do a lot of really mean things to him. But the priest has always been very nice to him and lets him live and take care of the goats where, where he is. And one day a man, a pilgrim comes to their town and the pilgrim asks if Boy will go with him on this pilgrimage that he's, he's going to another city to see the relics. And the relics are these holy things that are all around um, in Europe in the Middle Ages. And a lot of them are parts of saints or things that were really closely associated with saints. So it might be the saint's veil or it might be the bone from their finger because they died a long time ago or it might be their toe. There's a lot of things that sound a little bit weird and gross to us now but were really important in the time. And so Boy and the Pilgrim go on this journey to see the relics and eventually, Boy finds out that the pilgrim that he's traveling with isn't just going to see the relics. He's going to steal the relics. And Boy has to decide what he's going to do about that. Is he going to go along with it? Is he going to stop this man? What is he going to do? So Boy is a really interesting character to follow along with in this story. Again, this one's called The Book of Boy, and it's by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. One more thing about this story, this one has some elements of fantasy. So where the other two stories only told us things that were either absolutely true or could have been true, very realistic stories, this book has some things that maybe, maybe sound a little bit more like a fantasy novel than most traditional historical fiction. So if you like that kind of read, you might like this one as well. So those are the three books that I wanted to tell you about today, but because we're talking about historical fiction, I wanted to introduce the idea of making a time capsule. So a time capsule is something that you put together and you put away for a specified amount of time. So you can tape up a shoebox and put it in your closet and say, do not open this shoebox until 2030. Or you can take a can or something that's very waterproof and will survive and you can bury it underground and see how long before someone finds it and opens it. So you can set a time for how long you want to keep something or you can 
put it somewhere where it will be far away and not likely to be found. Um, but make sure you have permission to put something wherever you put it, whether you bury it in your backyard or you hide it in a closet or wh whatever you're going to do. But also think about where you're going to put something when you decide what kind of box or container you want to use for your time capsule. I would suggest labeling it. If you are thinking that you're going to open it in five years, you want to put the date that you can open it on there and you want to make sure everybody knows what it is, but you also want to put it somewhere where it's not going to be too tempting. You might want to tape it up so that you aren't tempted to open it because the surprise for yourself is going to be better if you've kind of forgotten what you've put in there. But while we're talking about it, what should you put in your time capsule? You should think about the things that are important to you right now. So things that represent the way that your life is right now or something important that happened to you recently or something along those lines. So you might include letters. Maybe you would have your friends or your family write letters to you to, f to open in five years. Um, you should certainly write a letter to yourself in the future. Dear future me, what do you want future you to know about your life right now. You can also include small things in there. Keep in mind, if you're gonna be keeping this box all taped up and you're not gonna be able to open it for five years, you don't wanna put anything that's super valuable or important to you right now in there. So you might, instead of putting your very favorite headphones, you might put the pair that broke last week because you're not gonna need them, but it will help you remember oh, this was really important to me when I put it in the box. You can also put little post-it notes or labels on things if you think you might forget why something's important. I use these headphones all the time when I was listening to audiobooks for my school project. Or maybe you write out a playlist of all of your favorite songs and put those with your headphones so that you'll remember all of the songs that were really important to you right now. But you can also include little toys or things that are important or have something to do with where you are right now. I might put in a stress ball because I broke my hand earlier this year and I'll remember that squeezing my stress ball was something that I had to do a lot of this year. It's totally up to you. What's important to you and your family right now? What things do you want to remember in five years? Think about those things and include them in your time capsule. All right, I hope you have fun making a time capsule of your own with your family. I also hope that one of the books that I talked about this week sounds interesting and sounds like something that you wanna check out. If you have other things that you're looking for, other kinds of books that you want recommendations of or wanna hear me talk about, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you back here next week for another middle grade moment. Have a wonderful week, friends. Bye.